There was a study put out by the USGS uh, last year that stated that we're going to most likely be seeing peak coal in the Appalachian Basin in five to ten years. So uh, what that means is that it's on its way out. We don't have to look for alternatives to coal. We have to look at what's going to happen post-coal. What's a post-coal or beyond-coal economy? We know what happens to communities that don't have an alternative plan to a single resource dependent economy. They turn into ghost towns. Down there, everyone gets impacted the same. You know, a legislator or a coal operator uh, gets hit just as much as the guy that's on welfare or the mother that's trying to support a family. Uh, so it, it is you know, a natural resource economy and poverty is the ultimate equalizer down there. When we're looking at communities in general and looking at both aspects, the social and the natural aspects, or the social and ecological aspects, it's such a complex system. So we have to go and work with communities with a multifaceted approach, right? You can call it a systems approach, you can call it an eco or a holistic approach, um, the approach that I use in my work is ecological design, uh, which looks at the way um, that communities and development can utilize ecological processes, uh, such as you know, native structures, functions, looking at photosynthesis, looking at filtration mechanisms, diversity, resilience, which is such a strong term of um, how a community can absorb a disturbance. And then once a disturbance passes the threshold of that absorbance, how it can adapt, right? So how resilient is the ecology through its diversity, through its different niches that it holds? How resilient are the people? Is the economy? How we're applying ecological design and ecological economics is looking at the equity of distribution of these resources is looking at a diversified economy, which is really fundamental. When we're talking about ecological design at the Gun Institute, we're very privileged and fortunate um, to have uh, John Todd as a fellow. And uh, John has been a, basically a pioneer in, in developed the fields of ecological design. The, the principles and these orders that he put out uh, really look at how we can address a complex system looking at developing a regenerative economy um, for areas that are heavily degraded, socially, economically, ecologically. In uh, Appalachia, the, the real foundation that we look at is soil and how to uh, first off build healthy, productive soils um, that everything else can stand up on. So um, that can provide a foundation for uh, developing local biofuels for and biochar of looking at um, sustaining agroforestry, sustainable agricultural systems in a way that you're utilizing a landscape that is essentially unmanaged, unproductive, and toxic. So in terms of ecological design, we're seeding uh, a whole mix of high diversity perennial native grasses that are native to the system but get outcompeted by um, all the different other types of forestry vegetation. Uh, so the, the main thing about uh, the perennial vegetation is that it develops root systems and looks at developing uh, very large scale root systems that till up the soil, that break into different clods and can break through that, cycle nutrients, uh, promote infiltration of different uh, precipitation and uh, hydrological mechanisms. Um, 
and, and add organic matter. Moving into the second order is how we can utilize uh, the byproducts of um, natural technologies. You know, so in this instance, it's developing a local biofuel and biochar um, economy. So the char is one byproduct, another byproduct is synthetic fuel, uh, which you can use in, for straight up energy. And the other product is uh, a, a bio oil, again, which can be utilized to actually go right back into the machine, that the, the pyrolysis machine and power that. Uh, so it's very much closed loop. The third order of ecological design looks at how we take different natural processes and, and also different um, industrial processes that normally don't interact with each other or feed off of each other and find ways that they can actually become a closed loop. So essentially an industrial ecology uh, that's based again off of the principles and the instructions that we see in natural ecosystems. Uh, in providing benefits and different types of services, products, jobs, um, resilience, essentially, to uh, these local communities. I definitely think that Appalachia can become um, an example for many other communities, regardless of uh, the type of economy that it's founded on. And, and specifically for other types of single resource dependent economies.